Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Carlos, also known as Sharpu. Yep. <laughs> uh, you guys might know him from his amazing quadcopter videos on YouTube. First person video, FPV mm -hmm. quadcopter flying. That's it, that's it. So a couple weeks ago, I joined you guys for a morning excursion. You guys were flying quads, racing quadcopters, and so many people wanted to know how they could build one. And uh, thankfully, we're very fortunate because your sponsor, <laughs> Luminaire, uh, was able to provide us with a kit, basically, to assemble a quadcopter. And I want to run through all these components and basically teach you guys and learn myself how to build a quadcopter. Yeah. Uh, so what's the very first component we want to talk about? Well, I guess we can start. I, I like to divide the build with like two sides of things. One of them being the actual quadcopter, uh, which you can fly without any of the FPV gear. Mm -hmm. So this is the area where we have like the radio and the rest of the stuff. And then in here we have the FPV side. If we have to start somewhere, I'll say, for example, the frame. The frame. The, the frame, this is the QAV 250. Okay. And basically that's where you're going to put everything on. You know, it's your, your airframe. It's made out of carbon fiber. It's pretty light and strong. And, um, you know, there's a lot of a, a lot of different sizes, a lot of different w like ways, uh, sizes, uh, arrangements, configurations, yeah, yeah, configurations, and this one happened to be a 250 size. That's 150 millimeters yeah. diagonal I th or, or length uh, di diagonal. diagonal. Okay. And um, um, but, but there's a lot of other other ones. Like also, if you have a 3D printer already, you can. Uh, you can actually get files from online. For example, a guy locally here uh, called hovership.com, you can find it. They, he put the files online and you can actually download the file and print your own your own starting version I've for, seen for that. trying. Yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. Thingiverse. It's like the oh, most yeah, yeah. popular downloaded thing. People yeah, yeah. Can print their own quadcopter yeah. frames. So that's also great. This is more of a, a more a professional, harder, stronger kind of frame for racing and to be able to, you know, uh, push the limits with this kind of a frame. So um, what's important about a frame, if you're looking at the design, if you, whether you buy one or download the print one, uh, quadcopter, obviously there are four struts here. Mm -hmm. um, the distance between the main body and the struts, is that important? Yeah, because depending on the, the distance that you have here, it's going to allow you to feed different sizes of propellers, for example. Ah, okay. uh, on this case, we want to keep it small, and this is, this is what actually started this whole racing new thing, is the size, and it's so portable. And these ones use five-inch propellers. Mm. So it fits five-inch propellers. The, the whole entire length of it. Yeah, the, the entire length of it. So, you know, if that's a good starting point, and it's really agile because the propeller size is small and it, it let it spin really, really fast. But then there's upgrades that you can add to the frame uh, in order, for example, to fit bigger propellers or so more thrust, um, um, which I have over there. Maybe we can sew it after. Yeah, yeah, you want to see it. So in um, terms of materials, too, this one's carbon fiber. It's really strong. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. want the the frame to be incredibly strong. Yeah, visit, right? yeah. The, the the cool thing about this frame is it's a really simple design. You know, it's like just a flat surface with uh, where you put all your components, and then like another layer, right, where you where you just cover the top section mm -hmm. of it, and then under is in a clever way. I think it's around here. We have a power power distribution board, ah. where is where you will solder the rest of the components, and this all of that goes under here, hidden, so you don't have to put it inside, and now it takes space, okay. and it keeps the the electronics cold with air. Um, so that being said, this is this is the frame, one of the important part of the of the build. Uh, I think the next thing we can probably talk about is the motors, mm. right? So we have four motors here. Yeah. This is some Lumineer motors. This is, I think, 20, 2300, yeah, 2300 kV. That's how fast they spin. And this is a small size. So it's a good size for a, for a, a quad like this one. Um, What's the know, range when people look for motors? On this on kind this of frame size, size. we go from, we go from uh, 2000 to 23. You know, that's the range. Like, generally, people go 2000 or, 20, or 23 most of the time. Um, you always have to keep in mind that, um, you know, Depending of, of how fast, they, like a 2300 kV, they, they spin really fast. So you have to make sure that the rest of your setup can work. That. Yeah, can work with that that, that configuration. Um, in this case, that, that kind of sends us to um, the ESCs. Ah, so the ESCs, speed controllers. That's it. So they control the, the speed of the motors, and you always have to make sure that all your components kind of work together. For example, in this build, we're gonna we're gonna use a 3S battery, right? Okay. So we, uh, we that's how much power we're gonna send to the motors, and we need to figure out how much power the motors draw. And depending on how much power the, uh, how much power the motors draw, you have to choose the right ESC. Because if they don't have enough, uh, they don't support enough amperage, then it's gonna they're gonna not work. Right. This one is 12, 12 amps, and they work completely fine with something like this. Um, also, depending of 
the size of the propeller is going to draw more or less. This is like a conservative kind of propeller. It's a five inch by th uh, the pitch is three. So that's not a lot of pitch. Um, so they don't draw that much. Mm. There are other propellers that have like a four, even 4.5. That means more thrust, but they're going to they're gonna be Got it. taking a lot of, so you probably, you know, you have to start reevaluating what you want to. So you're, it's a, you look at it from a whole system standpoint. Yeah. You start when you're buying a quad, you know, what's the frame size you're going to get? Mm -hmm. 250, right, yeah. millimeters. Then you talk about, okay, knowing this size and the size of struts, I can use five inch props. Yeah. And then with, you know, this type of pitch, then I can use this speed motor, yeah. this type of electronic speed controller that will need this amount of power. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. That's exactly what it is. And you know, it it generally when you look at the motor, it's gonna tell you all of those things. So you don't even need to test it yourself. You will read it and go like, okay, how much how much this motor will draw with these propellers? This much. Okay, I'm gonna get these CSCs or. So it'll be a chart that you can yeah. find on these so websites. So you don't need to do all of that stuff. Mm. Um, apart from okay, so that's the, kind of like the power configuration there, uh, and then. I guess so. This is a 1300 milliamp. 1300 milliamps, yeah. And you know, the the more capacity, usually the denser it is, heavier it is. Yeah, uh, exactly. Is this a good capacity? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. For these kind of motors uh, and and these kind of props, five uh, five three, this is a good battery, and you can probably fly, you know, over five minutes with it, more than five minutes. Which okay. in these things, that's the average, five eight minutes, something like that, mm. depending of. Uh, on a build like this that is probably going to be pretty light, I'd say more than five minutes with something that small. Right. Um, but again, you can scale this up and, and go to like, you know, bigger motors, then yeah. bigger, bigger, uh, bigger battery, you know, everything kind of scales up. Um, I guess another, the, the next thing will be, now that we know all of that, we can talk about the radio. The mm -hmm. radio we're going to be using is, is a, a Free Sky Taranis. Okay. It's a pretty like affordable radio and it's programmable, so it's like a nice, nice starting point there. Um, you can use all kind of radios. There's a lot of different, but we're just using this one because this is the one that I use. So it's I'm a more good comfortable. starter radio. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this one uh, for for flying FPV uh, has some of the features like the audio feedback. Yeah, it can, it can it talks and you can program a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, you can do this. Kind of the limit basically. You can program if you are good at it. You can do. So and it scales things. up. Like this is a radio yeah, you can yeah. get and then keep with you for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if you want to use this transmitter for uh, multiple quads, like if you have different quads, then yeah. you just buy different receivers. Uh -huh, yeah, you have a. Um, you can actually open this this little port here, and you can put different modules. Okay. On my setup, uh, that maybe we can show later. I can show you that I have another module on it because so, I I use in a longer range kind of a mm. transmitter and receiver for go, to, to be able to go a little further. Um, Let's see what, oh, so what's the main this? thing, yeah, we're forgetting the main <laughs> the thing brains. is the brain. Yeah, the brain is the, the flight controller. The one we're going to use today is the NACE32. It's a pre pretty popular component. Um, it's really affordable. Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's probably around $25 or something like that. So mm. it's a really affordable flight controller for what it can do. It's a really simple one because we want it for racing, so it doesn't have a lot, maybe as many features as other like more expensive and. So this and, one you wouldn't get necessarily for like an autonomous flying for programming. Actually, can I'm you not. Do I don't. On this? I, I as it is like this. No, I don't think this one have because this is the acro mode, right. the, the acro version of it, uh, and I actually don't know because I've only been using this for um, for racing. For racing. Right. So and this one, but it gives you some options. I mean, it it it, it definitely gives you. Um, Gives you a level mode mm -hmm. and, uh, that will level it for you, so it's easier mm -hmm. to fly it. And then it gives you like a raid mode, which is just like completely mm, you can do maneuvers, like you know, like full control and a couple of other things. I mean, I think you can do more than than I'm using it for, but you know, for racing, this is more than enough. Yeah, so it compensates, one. automates some of the flying, makes it easier to to adjust and balance all four of the motors yeah. with each other. Um, but when you're shopping for a flight controller, you can spend lots of money yeah, and get yeah. something that will, you know, that will automate, that will, you know, you can program with your phone and do flight pads. Yeah, you can do crazy stuff. This one is more orientated for, you know, the racing. At least okay. it's the one that I really like to use these days. So um, what we've talked about so far, that's almost it for the, to, yeah. in terms of components. If you want to build a quadcopter to fly yourself. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe we forget these. This is just the the. The receiver, receiver for the radio. Right. We forgot. Yeah, it's a, it's a really small version, and, and I really like it because for a small frame like this, you can fit it right in there, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's pretty nice because I also have telemetry. Telemetry means that you can connect your uh, your battery power, and it will actually read it, send it, send it to the radio, and read it for you it. if you have enough battery left or not. Um, yeah. Most transmitters come with a receiver, but you can also buy modules separately. Yeah, yeah. That will send different information back. Yeah, you can. They have again a lot of options, but okay. 
Uh, then on to the FPV components, because mm-hmm. that's what that's what people are really excited about, flying by yeah. sight. Yeah. Um, how many, what do you need to get for that? Well, obviously, uh, we mentioned this in the other video, but basically you need a set of goggles, um, video transmitter, which is this little guy here. This will send mm-hmm. the, the image to, to, the, to the goggles, and then a camera. Oh. Uh, on this case, we're using a set that comes all together, and it's really easy to set up, so it's good for a starting point. Uh, generally, people, s- upgrade to uh, to different to, to, to something different maybe a little more advanced but this is a good starting point and since we're going to build it all, all today it feels like this will be like an easy way of like put it all right. together this is yeah. a fat shark uh, one of their s- basic starter kits and like you said mm-hmm. it comes with a camera yeah. it comes with a transmitter it mm-hmm. comes with the goggles mm-hmm. but each of these components are things you can buy separately yeah. also you yeah. can buy you know HD goggles if you want to have I mean, you need an HD transmitter yeah. that you need a different type of camera you can everything is upgradable you know mm-hmm. but this is perfect to start because it will take us very little time to put it together the cool thing about this setup actually I never tried it before but um, the camera that it comes with it, it actually records as well oh okay. so it's not only it's not only the flying camera but it actually you can have a little memory card there and records the footage oh that's very nice so you don't have to add the add extra you, if you camera. Wanna, don't have to put another yeah. GoPro on there which is something you can do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, let's talk about weight then. How do you know at which point that you, you know your your weight limit of your your motors and well and the frame flying it? I feel okay. my, my, my personal opinion is just, just fly it and and you will feel it. You'll feel like okay, this I, I'm I'm punching it and it's not going it's not going up high, uh, fast enough. Then you probably are putting a little too many things in there. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's not either necessarily to get obsessed over it, but it definitely is something that you have to consider the weight. Okay. You don't want to just throw too much on. Yeah, it. for example, something like this. You can you can uh, you can run it without a problem, and this will have plenty of power, right? But if you're thinking, oh, I mean, actually, this can actually carry a GoPro as well. But if you start putting more things like maybe bigger battery, a, a, a GoPro, and stuff like that, you just have to maybe start reconsidering uh, and thinking, uh, maybe I need a bigger motor, maybe I need a little bit of motors or bigger battery, or and you just have to balance it. Basically, it's like a balancing game. Of- awesome. Well, we have all the components we're using here listed in the description in a link below. Um, And let's get started to building this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's build this and then we'll come back and talk about what we've done. Yep. Was fast, <laughs> fast for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> not so much for here. But it was still a pretty fast build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Um, so let's talk about every part of the build. The here, okay. here it is. Mm-hmm. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's a really, really nice looking kit. Yep. Wow. Um, let's talk, talk step by step uh, and recap everything you mm-hmm. did to assemble this. Um, it looks like the first thing you did was solder on to this um, this control board in the back, the bottom, yeah. right? This is a power distribution board here. Right. Uh, and uh, we pre solder put all the solder on it, and then place the ESCs and solder them in. Right, and there are four ESCs, uh, each connected to a motor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the way, you, you know, you, you, we did some clipping of the wires, it's tightly fit in here. Uh, use some double-sided tape. Yeah, that's a good trick because if you leave them, uh, if you leave them by like just hanging in there, any crashes might make them vibrate and might become loose. So uh-huh. the connections might be become loose. So what we did is put a little bit of double-sided tape, tape it in there, and that will keep it nice and steady. Mm-hmm. Also, we added a little bit of hot glue in each connection to make sure that you know 
I mean, the more you crash, the more you learn. You want to put little thing, little extra things that will guarantee that things won't go wrong. So the the glue, just in case some water gets in there and it uh, connects the two the, the two wrong poles or anything like that, then right. you want to put some hot glue to to uh, protect it. Now on this power distribution board, that's where the battery also connects. To. Yeah. So you connect the battery then, mm -hmm. which is this yep. connection, the little guy there, into the back. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then that was basically it for the power yeah, distribution that, board. Yeah, that was that's pretty easy for this setup. And and then we added that extra one right here, mm -hmm. just so we wanna if if since we're starting with the FPV kit that is all together, then we didn't need to use this. But I left this on just in case you wanna upgrade to a different camera or a different setup, you can have that power on right there. Plug it in and you're set. There are a couple of different contact points we didn't use. Yeah, there's, here. there's there's another one, two, three, four. They're no, upgrades to power. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you're looking at a battery to connect, you want to make sure the battery is going to have enough voltage capacity to power mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Yeah. You have to do some math. Yeah, you got to figure out the voltages and figure out on every part of the quad, every, every part of your electronics, you got to make sure that are compatible with the voltage that you're sending to them. Mm. Otherwise, you're going to need to add regulators. In this case, everything was really easy because the FPV gear is already set up uh, and easy to, uh, to connect. Okay, um, so after the power distribution board, we connected that with some spacers, mm -hmm. uh, had that to the main body yep. of, of the, the frame, and then uh, the control board. Yeah. yeah so the, the, the frame is super easy to build. It's almost like builds itself, like you said. Uh, and then the next thing we did, just, that's it. We did the nace. The nace uh, comes without the pins soldered to it. Mm -hmm. So we soldered them in. Mm -hmm. There was a little mistake in there, but <laughs> it works fine. So we soldered them in um, and also since we are using this, there's different ways of connecting the uh, NACE to, um, uh, to your radio, uh, to, sorry, to your receiver. In this case, we, we're using a PPM. PPM, what it does is sends all the channels through, through a simple like three cables, power and wind signal cable. Oh, so okay. that simplifies the rig a lot because you don't need to connect all the pins. You, know? right. you need your motor pins, which are the ones back here, the ones that we solder, and the rest, we just solder uh, the cables straight into the nays. Oh, and so on a, a different type of receiver, um, you might have to solder all the channels. All the, all the channels, so then you will have a bunch of pins here coming out that we'll have to mm -hmm. solder. In this case, it keeps it clean. Yeah, kept it simple. Yeah. Um, the motor connecting pin, that's where we had maybe a little bit of a flub, but still yeah. connects. The yeah, that's all fine. All the contact points are there. We just, we just have to make sure that you plug them in the right right, right, right side, because two sides. But this works fine. It's just a little shorter of a connection, but it'll be fine. And then double-sided tape again. Yeah, and uh, double-sided tape is, is your friend of these kind of things, because it's so easy to change and so easy to, to place. The, the way we did it in this case, uh, we didn't have standoffs, mm -hmm. but we used double side tape. I personally always use double side tape because, again, the more crosses you have, the more you learn. Yep. The standoffs sometimes are really hard crosses, they might give up and just break, and you have to change the standoffs. So it's a little bit of gear, yeah. a little bit of suspension on You this. have a little bit of suspension, and also, I actually think it helps uh, eliminate some high frequency vibration. vibration. So I do like two layers, you can see it on the thing that we saw, mm -hmm. uh, but two, two layers, so I have a big you know, absorbing section, or even three layers if you prefer. Okay. Just, uh, um, and then we wrapped uh, the connections, mm -hmm. connected to the motors, and we actually, you marked the, uh, the uh, oh, speed yeah. controllers. When we started them in. Yep, because you have a specific order, you yeah. know, like, you know, this is supposed to be uh, connected to a specific point on yeah. the flight controller. The NACE, the NACE controller, the way it works is like, if we see it from here, uh, oh well, easier for here, the motor, the motor configuration will be one, two, three, four. Okay. So we want to make sure when we're placing them here, we want to remember because the cables are going to come up, up in the frame. And if you didn't mark them with the numbers, you might get confused on how to plug them to the flight controller. So we just mark them with some yep. Sharpie. Yep, and or you can use, you know, Tape Anything, tape, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. whatever works. Um, and then we didn't actually zip tie uh, the motors onto the ESC yet. Yet, and, yeah. Yet, because that was actually a really simple connection too. Yeah. The motor it, and the ESC, you just plug it in. Yeah, on this case is the kit. It comes with a pre solder pre uh, two millimeter uh, bullet connectors, mm -hmm. which is really easy to set up. You just plug them in. But like you said, we didn't put the zip ties because we have to first make sure that the motor side spinning the right way. The right direction. Got it. And when, when we check that on the computer, then we can just put the zip ties and clean it up, knowing okay. that they're spinning the right, correct, the right direction. So flight controller installed. Yeah. Uh, we think it works. Next is the receiver. The receiver, yeah, the receiver, like we said, we sat it on the, the board when we were preparing the flight controller, and then the, the I don't know if we can see it correctly, but right there is our, our uh, receiver okay. right there. 
the antennas are coming out of here. Okay. This still needs some cleaning to do, right? But mm -hmm. the antennas um, should be, it'll help if they're far from, from other electronics, for example, the antenna from the, from the, the, FPV. Uh, the FPV, the, the, the video uh, transmitter. Right. If they're far, it's better. It, it doesn't necessarily matter as much because they're pretty far away frequency-wise. So, but you know, the, the, the separation is always good to have. So here, what I probably do that we didn't have, but probably put some like, like we were saying, some straws or some Stirred plastic, straws. yeah, or something stiff and light, and to keep it to keep it uh, uh, approximately in, in an angle like this to get the okay. best the best range out of it. Yeah, so, bunny ears, yeah, yeah, bunny like ears, pretty antenna. much. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that, um, and then in front of the the uh, receiver there mm -hmm. is then the FPV camera, the camera. Yeah, and this case is a little different because uh, it, I never set up a camera like this before, but this one records as well, like we said earlier, so it's a little bigger, but it fit completely fine. Yep. We put it right there, double side tape down here, and then a, 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 a zip tie. Help, yeah, helpful zip tie that works mm -hmm. so well, just holding it together, and it's mm -hmm. pretty steady, you know? I mean, and this frame actually came with a nice guard yeah. in the front there. Um, initially, we had tried putting the FPV camera in front of, uh, of the frame, but you don't want that because yeah. it crashes into something and that's going to knock break the, the camera, camera off. So we Got put it. it back and, and it stays in there nicely. So if you hit anything, for example, the ground, you know, it won't hit the camera. Like now, saying. we've talked about the receiver here, the, the FPV camera. Mm -hmm. and of course, the FPV camera has its own transmitter yep. up on top here. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about earlier was frequencies. Yeah. So what are you controlling this on? So this one is a really simple uh, setup that it, it works really nicely. Uh, and, and this use, the, the frequency we're using here is 5.8. Okay. Uh, and it's the most, the, the, the most used, I think, in minis because it's really simple mm. and it doesn't have problems with the radio frequency because you always have to make sure that everything is compatible. Right. In this case, we're using 2.4 for control. For the radio. So we want to be far away from that. So this is 5.8. It's far away mm -hmm. and it, will, it won't create any issues. Mm. Uh, and okay. then the way we set up the, way we the, set transmitter. Up the transmitter is on the frame, we just, again, double side tape some zip ties in here, and the way I like to do it is not ideal because antenna gets, uh, you lose a little bit of signal in the battery being right under, uh -huh. but this way, from all the testing that I've done, is the, the, the way that keeps it together when crashes happen. Uh, so if it bends, and it uh, doesn't have any... Because you're elevating that high, if you yeah. want to fly underneath something... It hits, right. and you want it to be kind of like flexible a little bit, and I like mm -hmm. this way, just with zip ties here and here, and if it hits anything, it will just bend back, okay. and it won't damage the connection to the transmitter. And that's why you have the transmitter right there. Yeah. And you also told me that you don't want the transmitter, you don't want to power it on without the antenna. antenna. Oh yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big no. Um, because as a powerful transmitter, so if you have no, if the antenna is not connected, the power won't go nowhere, so it will go right. back in and just uh, and that will burn the board mess out. it up. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So where does the power from the FPV camera come from? Well, all the power here is coming from the same battery mm -hmm. in a setup like this. And bigger rigs, people divide it and have another battery specifically for the FPV gear. The thing is, you want to keep the the power clean. So when you are when you are the best way you have two batteries because one battery will feed the FPV yep. so that'll be completely clean on a setup like this so small we're sharing the power with one one uh, only one battery. The cool thing about this little set setup that we use the kit, uh, the FPV kit is that it also comes with a connector to power it and filters the power and regulates the power. Mm. So you don't have to do a lot. You just basically we use power to the quad right. there and then you use the balance plug into this really adapt, uh, small adapter here, that will be clean power to the video and it'll be clean wow. image. Okay, yeah. and so this relay adapter here, um, it, it goes straight from the battery, it, you know, it regulates it, it, it cleans it up, uh, but it prevents us from using a different accessory. Also. Yeah, uh, you know, that's when things, you know, you gotta choose and, and choose and pick what you prefer. Uh, on this case, we don't have anything to tell us the, the how much battery left you have. Right. On these LiPo batteries, it's always really important to keep Control on the on the on the lower side of things. So, like, so when you're when you're emptying them, you don't want to go and over discharge them because you will damage them and they mm. will don't, not perform as well. You want kind of want to monitor it as yeah. you're flying. Yeah. You know you have about five to eight minutes. So you yeah. want to check it every couple of minutes. Yeah, you want to check that you go and you don't go under any specific uh, voltage per right. cell. This is three cell. Generally, I stay of uh, I don't want to go lower than three point five volts per cell. Mm -hmm. So a little tool like this, that generally this is the easiest thing, you can put it anywhere, and you will connect your balance plug, and this is gonna be a little loud, but we should maybe try it. Yeah, plug it and, in. Um, we 
plug it in, and then it's gonna beep. And it will tell you, it will go three cell, all, it tells you the voltage, that's pretty low, uh, but it's good. 3.8, first number two, 3.5, so it tells you each cell what's, what's, uh, what's yeah. the reading. And you can set with this little click here, set your, your, uh, your yeah. alarm. So right. in here I have it at, let's say, 3.7. If that drops, any of the cells drop lower than 3.7, this is gonna start beeping like crazy. Right. That's one way of monitoring the, the battery. Another way, which I think for this setup will work better, is having some kind of telemetry. Right, and that's information directly from the flight controller yeah. the, right there, and that, we didn't actually solder those leads We didn't in. solder those in, but if you if you go and research a little bit more, a bit more about the board, it's really easy to have a couple of pins that will will send the information to the to the receiver here, mm. and you'll get it on your radio. Right, and that can be broadcast also on, on your radio. Yeah, so, so it will you tell you, you know, wow. your voltage is low, or whatever, whatever you want it to tell cool. you. Also, let me, let me, I'm trying to remember what, what other things we did in Saturn here. Oh, yeah, one thing maybe to mention that is helpful that we did in Saturn this time because it was kind of fast build is the, the beeper. Mm. There is another two pins right next to the telemetry ones uh, that uh, allow you to connect a little beeper. And then from your radio, you can click a thing and it will start beeping. Uh, so that is to locate your, yeah. if you crash somewhere, if it's yeah. dark, inside a building or something, mm -hmm. you can actually then use that as a... And it yeah. will start just going and it's easy to find. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's real useful. Yeah, that's an add-on yeah. that will take you like five minutes to, to do it. So that was basically it. I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just... Uh... I mean, we haven't flown this yet because after you install all the hardware, we have to plug it into a computer. Mm -hmm. There's software, there's a USB plug yeah, on, right the, on the flight controller. Yep, and then you have the monitor mixture. We first of all you test it yeah. to see if the motors are spinning in the right direction. Calibrate everything, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can find presets online. They're actually really good tutorials. We'll, we'll link them in the yeah. description on how to set up the software yeah. to do your first calibrations. Yeah, because that's that's something that it doesn't take that long, but you know, it's something that it would be nice to watch videos there or, or some links uh, mm -hmm. that, like you're saying that will explain it more in detail because it's yes. nice to learn all of that stuff. Right. It doesn't take long though. The moment you connect it to a computer, tune a couple of things. And then the thing, like right now, is probably ready to fly, you know, as it wow. is. That's exciting. Yeah. So that is a very beginner quadcopter, mm -hmm. uh, FPV quadcopter, and you've been building this for a while now, so you actually brought one of your own yeah. that's a more advanced version. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The, this is just a lot, a, a lot bigger. Like one of the things that we're using on this frame is the Lumineer um, extension arms. Mm. These allow you to put bigger propellers, Okay. meaning more thrust. Right, right, because we're talking about the struts, you're further away. Yeah. Right, we'll show that. Not, not only that, but it also, they're tilted forward. Oh, okay. So, meaning that, that you will get more momentum forward without having to angle your, your ah. camera. Because the way that works, obviously, is like, when you're going forward, you're tilting it mm -hmm. more and more in order yes. to go forward. Yes. The problem is you have to balance that by tilting your cameras, because yes. otherwise you'll be shooting the ground. Exactly. So these, these, these uh, uh, adapters uh, make the frame longer, fit bigger propellers, and also tilt the motors to help mm -hmm. you with speed. You have a GoPro attached on yours, yeah. in addition to your camera, and you've also cleaned it up. It's nicely contained, yeah. it's wrapped here. Yeah, we, we have it for your frame as well, but we haven't installed it. But this is, um, this is basically a, a nice little thing that protects your, uh, protects your frame right. from like, air coming in. And also what I really like is like for the grass. Mm. This morning we were racing, um, a lot of crashes on the grass, and there was a little, a little wet because it was uh. raining before. So generally, I finish, I finish after one of these races, and I will look inside, and it's like full of like wet grass and, yeah. and things that you don't want there. So this thing actually did a really good job of protecting it, which was an extra thing that I thought, oh, okay, okay well, that's kind of a cool addition. So I think you should definitely put that on yours when you're, when we're finished setting it Absolutely. up, you know. Um, and then that's a crazy yeah. antenna there. This right now, what we're using here is is a different, a different kind of a setup. We're using long range video, just mm -hmm. so people know that there's a lot of different um, ways of doing this. I'm using long, long range video, which means, well, let's explain it this way. The video on here is 2.4. Okay. But if you remember. That's we, what our transmitter was we, using. We were using transmitters, so then that eliminates us using the same right. signal for transmitting. So I'm using 2.4 video, but in this case, I'm using long range, uh, long range control, which is a lower frequency okay. that won't, won't um, create any problems with it. Got it. The cool thing about this, this right now is that you get more range, I'll say, and more penetration. Mm. The, the, the downside of it is the antenna size. Right. It's a little bigger. Yeah. It's still doable, you know, as you can see, this is still completely fine. The other one is a little better protected and smaller, but this is still 
like a good frequency. And then you have one more. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Which this one is when wow. we, we go to 1.3. Huh. And this is just pretty big antenna, oh so goodness. it's a little a little harder to, to put in there. Um, and on, on, the, on this one, you get even a little more range, uh, a little bit less definition, actually. It's kind of funny how it works. The, um, the, lower the, the lower the video signal, the frequency, you have a little less resolution, but you have more penetration and you mm -hmm. can go further away. So this to me, like 2.4 is a nice in between. Balance. In between, yeah. Very uh, cool. I mean, I don't think there's anything else out here that was different. Well, the FPV that maybe might be worth mentioning, yeah. um, on yours, we're doing like like an easy, all together, boom, connected, and it's mm -hmm. working. On this one, it's more advanced. I have an OSD installed there. It's a display that you can see your battery reading and other no, information. An on-screen display yeah. for your voltage. Okay. So that's a little more advanced. I'm using a camera that is like we like we said on the on the other video. It's a security camera that might be a little better than these mm -hmm. in times in time of refreshing and how fast you get the the video right. feedback. Lower latency. Low, lower latency. So. That's a little better. Um, other than that, you know, yeah, you all know, the core components. It's the same principles. Yeah, it's just different components and maybe a little more advanced on this and this yeah. build, you know. And the little uh, add-on here. On your case, like we say, we record with the FPV camera because I have yeah. a little SD, which is nice. On this one, if you want better resolution, you can put a GoPro or any other small camera. And this one, for example, I have with this little uh, anti-vibration um, ah, yeah, mount. Yeah. It, it eliminates any extra vibration that the, right. the quad might generate, and then we just put the GoPro in there. The That's GoPro great. 4, that, as you can see, is... Um, <laughs> You've already had some, some yeah. battle damage. But it's pretty amazing that for, uh, for, uh, for the crashes that it's been having, the, the GoPro is like, keeps going. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of resources online. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll share some of the links below, but this is something you want to get across that anyone can really do. Yeah. Like you don't have to be an engineer. You can just be enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I mean, that's really important. I mean, that's one of the things that kind of like make me start when I do this. Uh, and again, all this build up, all this, this stuff that we've been talking about, for me, is coming from a perspective that I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, an expert on this. I just know enough. And with enough research, you can do it yourself, you know, which is kind of like cool. I'm so excited to dive in. Thank you yeah. so much, Carlos. Thank you, man. For coming in and helping us build this. And thank you, Luminaire, for providing the components. Get FPV, I believe, is yeah, the website. Yeah, that's the store where you can find all of this stuff, like all the stuff that we built here is Get FPV. You can find it. I can't wait to take this out with you guys. Yeah, you have to Maybe not race, but just fly around and, and maybe observe your race. I think you'll start racing soon enough. <laughs> the moment you see us, you'll be like, I want to go in. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, man. Let's try taking this up yeah. in this air. Yeah. And we'll see you guys in the skies. Bye.